Okay, welcome back everyone, or if this is your first session, welcome. Uh, in this session, we are going to chat about the annual financial review and also the 990 informational reporting. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of words and a lot going on in these sessions, so bear with me and try to follow along as best as possible. Um, first, we're gonna chat about the annual financial review. Uh, please note that this is a chapter requirement and the annual financial review is due by August 1st. Annually, each chapter and region conducts a financial review or audit to test and validate its fiscal integrity and operating guidelines. So why is this important, you might ask? It ensures the chapter's financial statements correctly reflect the activities for the fiscal year. It ensures that minimum financial review procedures are in place um, that test the chapter's receipts and disbursement transactions and ensures that they are reconciled to the bank accounts. It also validates the transaction approval guidelines are in place and are being observed. Uh, so some requirements of the annual financial review. Each chapter is required to conduct an independent audit or the HFMA internal financial review by an individual or individuals possessing the appropriate financial experience and who are not involved in the day-to-day -day chapter bookkeeping activities. Uh, it's up to the chapter on which route you want to take. Some chapters choose to have an independent audit firm come in and do the review. Um, others go the route of the HFMA internal financial review guidelines. Um, chapters that conduct the HFMA internal financial review must send a copy of the completed and signed form back by August 1st. Uh, you can send this to accounting at hfma.org or feel free to scan or mail it directly to the office here. Uh, just a note, the review must consist of five fiscal months uh, included in those five months must be the first month of the year and the last month of the fiscal year, which in this case would be June 2019 and May 2020. The other three months can be any months of the reviewer's choosing. Uh, if a chapter decides to have an independent review performed by an outside CPA firm, it must meet the minimum guidelines established in the HFMA financial review program. But it's, it's important to note that a financial statement review does not meet the minimum requirements of the HFMA financial review program. If you need more information about this, uh, guidelines can be found in the Financial Tax and Insurance Management Guide within the Chapter Resource Center. Uh, prior to submitting IRS Form 990 worksheet, the annual review must be completed, signed, and the confirmation form must be submitted back to the association by August 1st with all supporting schedules and work papers. Um, as I mentioned earlier, chapters that have an independent audit or financial review performed uh, only need to send back this signed copy here of the form. Um, it is the chapter's responsibility to maintain all supporting work papers and um, permanent files, okay? Uh, the chapter board of directors should review the results of the annual financial review or audit and be, have an opportunity to ask any questions prior to submitting the annual review and the confirmation form here. All right, so next we're gonna take a look at some of the sections of the HFMA chapter financial review. Uh, first is the internal control questionnaire. So this is just some sample information. You'll see here in part A of the financial review is related to cash receipts and collection procedures. The section gathers additional information regarding the oversight, handling of cash, uh, tracing deposits from the check all the way through to the bank account, and then also discusses some items related to bank reconciliation. So for example, number two, if you read here states, are cash receipts in the form of cash received at a chapter event verified by a second chapter volunteer? This question is asked to ensure proper checks and balances are in place. Uh, next, the review goes into cash receipts, disbursement, and bank reconciliations. Uh, the purpose of these sections is to test and validate the functionality and controls within each of these areas to ensure that proper controls are implemented and functioning as expected. For example, the reviewer will do things such as analyze invoices for proper approval, test an, appro test an appropriate sample of board volunteer expenses, expense reimbursements, and also account for a numerical sequence of all accounts payable checks. These procedures help to ensure all disbursements are properly authorized and accounted for. And just a reminder, uh, the annual financial review and confirmation must be submitted by August 1st, signed by both the offboarding treasurer and the offboarding president. Okay, so that's 
covers it for the annual financial review. Next, we're gonna chat about the 990 informational Excel form. So each year, the association completes a group 990 return that includes all HFMA chapters. In order to gather all of the information needed for the group return, we need you to follow the steps outlined here. First is the 990 survey. This will be sent out sometime in June and due back to the association by July 1st. Uh, we'll review a few sample questions in just a moment. So after the 990 survey, we need you to finalize your QuickBooks for the year and complete your annual chapter financial review by August 1st, as we just discussed. Uh, if you need more details, again, on the annual either rewind this video or take a look at the financial tax insurance management guide within the chapter resource center. Uh, finally, we will prepare a 990 informational Excel worksheet and send that to you for your review. In this review, we ask you to review all P&L and balance sheet data information, which will be pre-populated for you. And then new for this year, uh, there will be a column with variances, and we're asking that you provide explanations for any year-over-year -year differences greater than $10,000. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little more about the 990 survey. Uh, the purpose of this survey is to assist us in gathering general questions required for the 990 group return. Um, as mentioned earlier, this will go out sometime in June and be due back by July 1st. Uh, we only need one member of the chapter to submit the survey. Typically, the treasurer and the president will work on it together, or they will decide which one of those individuals will complete the survey. But again, we only need one submission per chapter. Um, here are some of the information we ask for. Uh, it includes questions like the number of voting members, uh, the number of members that are independent, a uh, sample question, does the organization have a written conflict of interest policy? Um, as you go through your policy documents in your checklist here, you will see we do have a conflict of interest policy. Um, so general questions like this will be asked. Uh, there will be a number of other yes, no questions. There's not many open-ended questions, um, but if you do have any questions related to any of the survey questions, um, please feel free to reach out to us at accounting at hfma.org. Okay, now let's look at the 990 Excel worksheet that we will pre-populate for you, but we need you to review the data and provide additional variance analysis for year-over-year -year differences of $10,000 or greater. Um, you'll notice here, once you get the worksheet, your chapter name will be listed at the top along with your federal tax ID, which will help you to identify that this is in fact your um, 990 worksheet you should be working on. The next session section lists the treasurer and the person responsible for the accounting records. Uh, we have some sample information here with Perla and myself. Next are the actual financials that we need you to review. Uh, first is the balance sheet. This worksheet will be pre-populated with ending balances for fiscal year 19 and fiscal year 20. Uh, thank you to Perla for pre-populating that for us. Um, please note, oh, excuse me. Please note, uh, there will be two new columns that are part of the worksheet this year. Uh, one will be a difference column showing the difference from ending fiscal year 19 to ending fiscal year 20. And then there will also be a column for variance explanations, again, where we're asking that you provide any explanation or information that you may think would be helpful in explaining any variances for $10,000 or more. Okay, next is the chapter income statement or profit and loss statement. So same concept here, but these figures are going to be related to the P&L rather than to the balance sheet. So again, there will be an additional variance column and a column for variance explanations. And we ask that you help us in explaining items greater than $10,000. This helps us greatly when we are actually um, preparing the group 990 return. Uh, sometimes we have to explain variances and you may have had Perla contact you in the past asking, you know, why did this go up? Why did this go down? Um, why is this booked here? Um, so this will help us to kind of alleviate some of those questions and have them up front. Okay. Um, so quick recap here. Uh, those worksheets will be sent out uh, around September 1st, and we're asking for your review and variance analysis back by September 15th. Uh, and that is about wraps it up for the annual financial review and the 990 informational worksheets. Uh, thank you for joining this session. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at accounting at hfma.org.